This morning I had a discussion with my wife, right? I looked at her. She said, who are you voting for in the, for, in the Democratic Party or rather in th this, this November? And I said, you know, I really, really want Bernie Sanders to win. Secondly, I wanted maybe Elizabeth Warren. Thirdly, I wanted maybe Andrew Yang to win. But it seems like it's going to be Joe Biden. And she said, so who are you going to vote for? And I said, I'm going to vote for Joe Biden. And I said, you know, because again, uh, uh, Bernie Sanders is a big boy. Yes, the corporatocracy and the DNC were instrumental in, in, in propelling B Biden. But we as progressives should have known that is coming and we should have been more aggressive. I wrote that on Daily Coast last night and I said we should have gone for the jugular because that's what Americans understand, the jugular. We should have gone to that to, for the jugular where, and, and really hit all those centrists up for the evil that they represent for the American body politic with a smile, of course. We didn't do it right. We played safe. We played nice. We didn't go out and say, if you are supporting anything other than Medicare for all, you are supporting, in, you're supporting voluntary manslaughter. You are saying it is okay. If you, if you go out there and articulate, we cannot afford Medicare for all, you are saying it is okay for us to allow other people to die. That is what you're saying. If we can't afford it, it means we are okay to have other people die. We can't afford it. Billionaires continue to accumulate all our wealth, but we can't afford to, to really heal or, or provide health care for the least of us all. It means what we're saying is that it's okay for us to have an X number of people die because we don't want to tax rich people. That's all it means. And if you're a centrist and you're saying that, you're saying... It is okay for me. Now, when you say, well, so then why are you going to vote for Biden? Well, I'm going to, I am not leaving the progressive movement. I'm staying with the progressive movement. So I told her, I told my wife, yeah, I'm voting for Biden. She said, uh, but the way you talk, what about all those young people that listen to you, that they're going to throw their arms up and say, well, I'm not going to vote for, I, I, then I gave her the story. And I want to tell you the story that I gave her. And I want everybody here to listen to the story in detail. Because it is something, first of all, credibility is very important. And if I go out there and I, I promote all these progressive values and then constantly say, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is just go for the best alternative and realize that what occurs all of the times is that the best alternatives is always an alternative that leaves a hell of a lot of people behind. Because that's what we do. We leave a lot of people behind. So I look at her and I said, I can't tell my young followers that... You know, I am voting for Biden. I need you to go vote for Biden. I said I did that during the Hillary Clinton period. After I, after I was a Bernie Sanders delegate and Hillary Clinton became... And, and there are two reasons that I did it for Hillary. One is to honor my baby, boom, my baby boomer sisters because I understood that they wanted... They wanted that to see a woman in their lifetime. And given that Bernie wasn't going to do it, I felt I owed that to my baby boomer sisters. I really do. Because, you know, I mean, as flawed as I thought Hillary was, Hillary was definitely a better pick than Donald Trump, in as much as we were going to still get quite a bit of uh, neoliberalism. But that said, I supported my sisters. I can't do... I can't do the full support again for Biden by, by urging all those who respect my words to say, I want you to please bite your tongue and go out there and vote for Biden. And let me, tell, let me explain this. And for those that think, oh, Egberto, I can't believe you're saying that. Let me explain this, folks. Time and time again, those in the middle who are comfortable constantly tell the downtrodden, the young people, to please just go at this time, go ahead and support this candidate. For us, we need it because it's better than the other. For whom? For you. For those people who are just okay. They are all right. They are making it. You're asking that the people who make the difference for you, the downtrodden on the left, that somehow they constantly come in your support and make life comfortable for you. Think. When have you made life comfortable for them? When have you said, I am going to bite my tongue this time, and in as much as I may not support 
all the things that you want me to support, they have always been there for me. And I will be there for them this time. Where is that? So I can't. I am, I am going, I will be supporting the ticket. But I can, I'll be, and down ballot, I'm going to be fighting like hell for down ballot. Please, folks, if you're just joining us, please share. I'll be fighting like hell for progress, for those progressives that are down ballot. I'll be fighting like hell for them. But I'll just be doing what I have to do for the neoliberals. Just, just what I have to do. Now, here's the deal. We constantly ask these people to, to work for them. But you know, I told, I wrote on Daily Coast once and I said, to, to many people it doesn't, Bernie, I mean rather, uh, whether it is Donald Trump or Biden, it doesn't matter to them because they don't see a difference. And people explode. How could you say that? That is so stupid. My God, you couldn't be saying that, Egberto. Trump is much worse than Biden. And you're right. Trump is much worse than Biden. But understand this. And this is what I try to let people understand about not being able to empathize with others. When you elect Biden, those folks that are doing just fine, do just fine. When you elect Trump, those people that are, less people that are doing just fine, do fine. But you know what? They still survive, right? But a little less do fine. But these people here in the middle, they do fine, right? When you support Biden, these people in the middle do fine. But... These people over here, whether it is Biden or Trump, they're screwed. All those student loans that we have been begging the people to help us stop the pilfer, help us stop the bankers from ripping these people off, help us do it. Come on, centrists, help those people, help these kids. You want their vote, help them. For those who want Medicare for All, I have stories and stories. I had a 26-year-old woman on my show. I interviewed her. Look her up on my show, please. She got interviewed. She felt a lump in her breast. At 26 years old, she goes ahead and she doesn't have, she's working, but she doesn't have health care. But guess what? She got another job, and that other job is starting in two or three months, so she's going to hold on with that lump till she finds out that she has health care with the big company that she got on with afterwards. So she holds on and she goes and oh my God, it is a lump that has grown bigger. You see, I see these things. I hear these stories. I can empathize with these stories. I see what real people are going through on that side. And when you continue to ask them, come on, support the centrists, help us out. You are constantly saying, help this group out. These people here will just be fine. What about them? To them, whether it's Biden or Trump, they lose. You may lose if it's Trump. But if you want their help, support them. I mean, with Bernie or Elizabeth, everybody wins. Why can't you see that? You may pay a little more in taxes. You may pay a little bit more money here and there. Think about it, people. Stop asking, you know, it is, it, is, it is, to put it blunt, it is rather selfish to constantly ask those, support the ticket, support the ticket. So they don't get their Medicare for all. So they don't get their student loan forgiveness. So they don't get their tuition-free college. So they don't get their family leave. So they don't get their uh, subsidized health care for their children, even as things cost more. And we, as those people that are older, were able to go to school at a much lesser cost. They didn't, so it cost them more. And who takes up, takes up the bank? Oh, the banks are willing to give them the money so that they are enslaved for the rest of their lives. And who's there to help them? Tell me. You want, everybody makes deals. When is the center going to make the deal with the left and say, for once and for all? I wrote an article for Daily Coast where I said, Usually the center never has to worry about the left helping. But will the left, will the center ever support policies that help the left? That help those people that are downtrodden? Will they ever, ever, ever say, you know what? Yes, it may cost us a little bit more. Yes, that bonus that that corporation would give may not be as high. Yes. But 
how many people did we save? I give my personal story of my daughter getting a stroke and having been in ICU for three days. I sat in a chair for three days. I slept in a chair for three days in ICU because I, didn't, I don't trust the American medical system. Okay? I sat in that chair for all this time. And, well, she's doing a lot better now. She goes home. And then the bills start to roll in. And she gets, the, day, the three days that she was in ICU, she gets a bill. So, folks, if you're just joining us, please share. Please share these programs. It is so important that other people understand what is going on in this system. And this happens to do, I, I, I want to jump to the coronavirus and say how it's going to create the depression in a little bit. But I got off on this tangent with, uh, with the, the support issues. But, so, as it turns out, folks, as it turns out, she gets, she gets a $72,000 bill. And, uh, oh, yeah, she has insurance with the school. She's a med school med student. But she's going to be responsible for a certain part of it. And I told her, beautiful daughter of mine, love you very much. Please, do not pay that bill. Accumulate all those bills and send them to me. So I'm going to make, I am going to make a case out of it. I'm going to publicize what our healthcare system really looks like. My daughter, when she went to med school, she said, you know, dad, I am not going to be a rich doctor. You know why? I said, why, babe? She says, because what I want to do is I want to work in the places. I want to go work in areas that need, that, that is neglected. Those areas that are neglected, that's what I want to do. I want to support people. Well, you know, when she gets out of college, I want to see her hold on to that. She's going to be a half a million dollars in debt. And then with this, having gotten a stroke and, the, and these bills, even more. Will she be able to do the right thing? You know, uh, so we have all these realities that we have to think about. So please, for all my brothers and sisters that are so against Bernie or Elizabeth because they want to give free stuff. It's not free stuff. It's pay it forward stuff. Had my daughter had Medicare for all, had my daughter had tuition free college to be a doctor, something that we're having shortages of right now, she would be off on her way to go into any indigent part of this country that needs a good doctor to support them. So I want you to realize what you're asking for.